Let's talk about the basics of how to burn fat. It's very important, and this is not about counting calories. This is about your hormones. If you understand the hormones that burn fat and how to trigger them versus the hormones that store fat and how to avoid triggering those, you can be very successful. I mean, it blows me away when someone goes to the doctor, they go to an endocrinologist and they assess their hormones. And they might say that you have low testosterone, so we're gonna give you testosterone. But what about the diet? That is rarely talked about. But today I'm gonna to talk about natural things to either increase or decrease your hormones related to one thing, fat burning. Out of all the hormones related to fat burning, is this hormone called insulin. It's made by the pancreas, it does a lot of things, but one of the main things it does is it helps you store fat. Let's take a look at this book right here called Medical Physiology. In the absence of insulin, all of the effects of insulin causing storage of fat are reversed. So if we wanna increase fat burning, we must lower insulin. You cannot burn fat if insulin is too high. You can be doing all these other things to increase all the fat burning hormones, but if this fat making hormone called insulin is elevated, it nullifies all of the other hormones that help you lose weight. This is why this information is very important because let's say for example, you go to the gym or you're exercising, right? And then you have this pre-workout protein bar that's loaded with sugar. You basically nullified your ability to burn fat. Or let's say you're working out and you drink your Gatorade filled with glucose. You just nullified that workout. The other really interesting thing about insulin is all it takes is a little bit of carb to block a lot of weight loss for a, a period of time. So let's say for example, I don't know, every other day you drink a little bit of wine or maybe you have a piece of bread, just a little bit of carbohydrate. Your ability to burn fat just went way down. Now it could take 24 hours or longer to burn fat. You can't just sort of do it a little bit. You have to just be all in and do it for a period of time to see the results. When we talk about what triggers insulin, we have carbohydrates, okay? What are carbohydrates? You have starches, you have fiber and sugars. Fiber is the only one that will not elevate insulin. So you don't have to worry about foods very, very high in fiber like green vegetables like salad. They have so much fiber, so little starch, that it's not gonna elevate insulin hardly at all. But typically, you wanna aim for less than 50 grams of carbs per day, not per meal, per day. But if you really wanna speed it up, I would bring it down to like 20 or even less than 20 carbs per day. The other thing that elevates insulin is eating in general. It's better to eat less frequent, so this is called intermittent fasting. It's not just the carbs, it's not just the frequency of eating that causes the elevation of insulin. It is also the seed oils. They basically trigger insulin resistance, they create a lot of inflammation, a lot of cellular damage, and out of all the things that parallel the trend of obesity, it's the seed oils that parallel obesity the most, which is interesting. Be careful at restaurants, it's in salad dressing, the other thing that elevates insulin is MSG, monosodium glutamate. There's a debate with monosodium glutamate. I mean, there's, if you look this up, it'll say, oh yeah, no, it doesn't elevate insulin. It won't cause weight gain. Have you ever been to uh, a fast food restaurant where they just load you up with MSG or even like a Chinese restaurant? What you're going to notice is that about an hour later, you are hungry and it's a lot of hidden sodium, which is going to make you thirsty. And if we trick the brain into thinking it's getting some protein when it's really not, you know, within probably an hour and a half, you're gonna like start craving something. The next hormone is estrogen. Estrogen can make you fat too. If you've ever heard about estrogen dominance, um, that's like a woman that has excess weight in the lower part of her body. And you can elevate estrogen by giving someone birth control pills, uh, hormone replacement therapy, things like that. All right, the third hormone to talk about is cortisol, very important. I'm gonna show you this book right here. This is called Encyclopedia of Medical Illustrations, Endocrine System. Okay, let's take a look at this right here. You see this guy right here? See that belly? It's coming from the adrenals. So the adrenal glands are pumping out the stress hormone called cortisol, and it's pushing the fat in the midsection 
Let's take a look at this one right here too. Boom. This is too much cortisol. You can see the belly. So the body is gonna grab protein from the leg and the gluteus maximus, which is your butt muscle, and convert that into sugar and then fat right in the belly. When you go through stress or you take prednisone, which is a synthetic version of cortisol, you can gain a lot of weight, not just in your belly, but in your face too, like they call it a moon face. So cortisol directs the fat more in the midsection, more than any other place around the gut as a survival mechanism. You also sometimes will get a buffalo hump in the back of your upper back. And this cortisol will also nullify the fat burning hormones, okay, which I'm going to talk about next, like testosterone. And also, and this is very important, insulin will nullify all of your fat burning hormones. How do we lower insulin? This is like the most important action. Number one, to lower insulin, you must lower your carbohydrate below 50 grams. I would lower it below 20 grams per day. I would do intermittent fasting, okay? Eat less frequently. I would also take apple cider vinegar in your water. I would consume berberine. It kind of uh, mimics the medication metformin which has to do with controlling insulin resistance, but without the side effects, okay? Cinnamon is another really good herb as well. All right, and then estrogen. It's just about avoiding estrogen, avoiding things that mimic estrogen. That would be like uh, certain chemicals in the environment. So you wanna do more organic. And then cortisol. How do we lower cortisol? Stress reduction, physical work around the house to get your attention off stress. Go for long walks. Take vitamin B1. All of those are very important. But there's one more, vitamin D. Vitamin D will help you lower cortisol. All right, let's switch over to the fat burning hormones, okay? There are two main hormones that kind of work together. Growth hormone, which is also an anti-aging hormone, and another hormone called IGF number one, insulin-like growth factor number one. It's a similar hormone function to growth hormone. Probably the best um, ultimate workout would be sprinting with growth hormone and IGF number one, intense exercise, good sleeping, moderate protein, and intermittent fasting. The next hormone is testosterone. Here's a hormone that a lot of men are taking and you can increase it by making sure that you either consume foods high in uh, zinc or make sure you're eating enough cholesterol. Cholesterol is the building block of testosterone and other hormones. So if you're on a statin, or if you're on a low saturated fat diet, you could be starving off your testosterone. The next fat burning hormone, glucagon. Glucagon will be nullified when you increase insulin. Glucagon is triggered by a moderate amount of protein and intense exercise. Very similar to growth hormone in IGF number one. All right, the next one is adrenaline. Adrenaline is increased with exercise. Adrenaline is also a neurotransmitter. And then you have the thyroid hormones, T3. That's the active form of the thyroid hormone. The way that you increase thyroid hormone is to remove the things that are blocking the thyroid hormone, like a fatty liver, like a problem with your kidney, like an iodine deficiency or a selenium deficiency or an estrogen dominant situation because if you have too much estrogen, that can block your thyroid. But the thing you need to know about exercise is that exercise really only contributes to about 15% of your overall weight loss. However, it can really greatly lower your stress and help you sleep to really make this whole program work. So even though it contributes 15%, if you don't exercise, my viewpoint is, it's gonna take a lot longer to get where you need to go. Based on this information, you now know how to burn fat and you know the relative importance between the fat burning hormones and the fat making hormones, especially insulin and cortisol. Those are the dominating hormones that will nullify the rest. Now, since we're on the topic of weight loss, there's one more associated condition that's very important to get a full understanding on, and that is insulin resistance. I put the video up on that right here. Check it out.